Today I'm going to give you a few tips so you don't accidentally drill through pipes and cables hidden in your walls. So let's imagine we we'll want to drill a hole in the wall here. So first of all, your first tip, rule out the obvious. Builders don't want to make walls funny shapes. They want flat walls. Flat walls are easy. As soon as you start making walls a weird shape, life becomes more awkward. So you can guarantee if your wall has a little box section like this in it, it's not there for decoration. There's something behind here that you don't want to drill into. And in this case, I can tell you that behind here, it's the soil stack for the house. So this is our first danger zone that we're going to avoid. I'm going to mark everything with yellow tape. Second tip, work out your safe zones or your danger areas as it should be called. In the UK, we have what's known as the wiring regs, uh, 17th edition as it currently is in 2017, but obviously if you're watching this at a later date, that might have moved on, so double check your regs. This book is really boring. I would suggest that you pick up, if nothing else, the on-site guide, which is kind of a condensed version uh, and a slightly more explained version of this behemoth of a boot. It explains where the safe zones in a wall are. They, they refer to them as safe zones, but really these are the danger areas. These are the areas where cables are most likely to run. By safe zones, they're, they're saying it's safe for the electrician to run cables in those areas. By this book, cables can be anywhere horizontally or vertically from a switch or an appliance on either side of the wall. So I know on this wall, there's a light switch on the other side of it. So the light switch on the other side is about here. So we can therefore assume that a cable might be running up the wall, horizontally or vertically, remember. Now, we've also got a socket down here. So there could be a cable running vertically or horizontally from this socket. So here's another danger area. And it could be up to the width of the appliance as well, so. And we've got a light switch here, same applies. And what the regs also state is that wires can run up to 150 mil from the ceiling. Which is about that. And potentially up to 150 mil from the corner of a wall as well. And then finally, for water and gas pipes, as far as I'm aware, there aren't rules as strict as the electricity regs for where water and gas pipes can run. Please correct me in the comments if you know otherwise. We'll just rule out the obvious. Here's a radiator down here. So there must be pipes running to this somehow. It's a concrete floor, so the pipes almost certainly aren't going under the floor, although they might be, but they're probably running up this wall. And you can normally tell if the radiator's on, which this one isn't, but if the radiator's on, you can normally feel the warmth in the wall from the central heating pipe. So that's a really good indicator of do not drill where you feel warm bits of wall. So I'm just gonna kind of assume that this entire area up here is gonna be potentially a dangerous place to drill. Obviously, you don't have to mark your wall out like this, but you just need to have a rough idea of where are the most likely areas that are going to potentially cause a problem. Oh, I haven't done a horizontal one from that socket. That's not to say cables and pipes aren't going to be running up any of these other areas. 
Depends when your house was built and whether the person who built it bothered to follow the building regs. There could still be pipes and cables in the areas that we'll call the safe areas, but it's just in these areas marked with the yellow tape. Those are the areas where we'll have to be really careful. So our spot here, where we want our hole, we're in a safe place. So my third tip for you is always use a detector. With a detector like this, this has got kind of three indicators on it. The beep and the light, I don't pay that much attention to. I'm mainly looking at the display indicator because this gives me a distance range for how far the metal is away. And that's the thing that I'm really looking for. So checking around here, I've got a green light, it's not beeping and I've got nothing on the display. You do sometimes get walls that are filled with, for example, Celotex insulation. The Celotex is covered in a, in a foil and the detector can pick up an entire wall of the, of the foil. So if you go onto a wall and your detector is constantly beeping and your display is always at about the same level, you know it's probably a wall that's just got a foil insulation in it or something like that. There should be, again as part of the regs in the UK, there should be a silver strip of foil behind pipes that are on solid walls. So for example, pipe work on dot and dab walls hidden behind the plasterboard. But that would appear to be another one of these kind of optional regulations. And by the way, don't put 100% faith in the detector. Even if the detector tells you there's nothing in the wall, don't assume it's correct because it can only go so deep and it depends what your wall's made of, whether or not it can successfully detect what's underneath your top layer of plasterboard or whatever. So my fourth tip for you today, always when drilling into a wall, if possible, use a blunt masonry bit. You don't need a sharp drill bit for drilling into walls, unless your wall's made of metal or wood, but that's probably not gonna be the case. For plasterboard, brick, blocks, anything like that, at least in the first instance, use a nice blunt masonry bit. I'm gonna go into the wall here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently go in, and I'm gonna stop. But this takes me on to my fifth tip for you. If you've drilled into the wall, and you feel like you might have hit something, or you feel that the bit of the drill has made be rubbed past a cable or a pipe, and you're not 100% that it's clear behind there, just get anything and feel through the hole. If you think you have hit something, I would suggest you use an insulated screwdriver, just in case you've drilled through an electric cable and you don't want to be giving yourself an electric shock. In this case, I know that there's nothing behind there. I'm just using a little screwdriver just to have a little feel. And it's also to feel, you can get a really good idea of what the wall's made of behind. It's block work, it feels soft, and I can pretty much poke the screwdriver into the wall so it's not brick. So because I know it's not brick, I know I don't need to get my SDS drill out. If you're still not 100% after feeling in there, worst case scenario, Make the hole a bit bigger, and you can use a torch to look into the hole. And you can see if there's anything there, and you can also get a better idea. Sometimes you'll maybe run into like a sheet of plywood behind the wall. That can be quite misleading as to what the wall's made of. It's a, a great material for attaching stuff into. But it's also a great material for hiding pipes and other nasties in the wall. So from all of that, we can work out that we're safe to go all the way into this wall to the required depth for drilling. And that's it, so we've got the hole done. I know it sounds complicated, but all of this you can think about in a matter of 20 seconds. But with all that in mind, my seventh tip, never nail or screw directly into the wall. Always drill first and use a plug. Unless your wall is completely made of wood, then you can maybe risk going straight in. 
assuming there's not cables behind the wood and if you've got a good idea of how thick the wood is. Generally speaking though, your wall's going to be made of either plasterboard or plaster over brick or block. So you should be using plugs and screws. I never use picture hooks with nails to put pictures up. It's far too risky. Picture hook nails are useless for solid walls. They will not, they're not going to go into brick. You're going to struggle getting them into block. So really the only thing that picture hooks are good for anyway is hollow walls. And the nails on picture hooks are razor sharp and they will go straight through a pipe or cable if you haven't already checked whether there's something behind there. If you've gone through your layer of plasterboard and you've found that there's a stud behind there, a stud is probably one of the best things that you can find in the wall for attaching into. Nothing will give you a better fixing than a nice big wood screw straight into the stud. No plugs needed. But you need to be 100% sure that you are going into a stud and you're not going into a pipe or cable or anything like that. A wood screw, wood screws are razor sharp. Some of them have inbuilt drill bits built into the tip of the screw. They will go through a pipe or cable like butter. Never assume that the person before you has done their job properly. Just because we've worked out where safe zones in the wall should be and where pipes and cables in the wall should be doesn't mean that's where they're going to be. Just like this wall here in a brand new house in the UK that has an electric cable running all the way up the middle of the wall. There's no switches or sockets anywhere. It's outside of the safe zones. And basically whoever's put that cable in either doesn't know what the regulations are or they've chosen to ignore them. And obviously also bear in mind in older houses, the older the house, the less regulations were around at the time. The wires could run anywhere. They could run diagonally right across. They could be running in circles. You could have pipes running in noughts and crosses shapes on the wall. I had one very unlucky customer who in the process of putting up a TV bracket, on the first hole they drilled through the coaxial cable for the aerial. On the second hole they drilled through an electric cable. And on the third hole they drilled through a central heating pipe. And eventually they gave up. They had to get an emergency electrician out and an emergency plumber. And then they had to get me out to fix the wall and put the bracket up properly. I think the whole experience probably costs them more than the television itself. Complacency is the biggest thing that will get you. The one time you don't use your detector, the one time you decide, oh, I've got a, an HSS bit on the drill, that'll do. That'll be the time where there's a pipe behind that wall and you go straight through it and you've got a very unpleasant day. And worst case scenario, Make sure you know how to switch the gas off. Make sure you know how to switch the water off and you know where the stopcock is. Make sure you know how to switch your mains electricity off to the house. And keep a phone to hand because if you go through a pipe, you're gonna be stuck with your finger on that pipe, stopping the water coming out while you're on the phone to someone to get them to come and help. I need to uh, take all this yellow tape off the wall and hope it doesn't rip any of the paint off. So there you go folks, I hope you found that useful. Uh, I have kind of fast forwarded two and a half years and um, if you haven't realised I did do a bit of a re-edit of this video. To cut a long story short, I put it out there ages ago, it did nothing on YouTube at all and then suddenly it started going a little bit like semi-viral and the problem was I was never particularly happy with the edit of this video anyway and a lot of people complained that it was far too long, and it was, and a lot of people complained that I rambled on far too much, which I did, and I've managed to like literally half the length of the video just by taking out superfluous nonsense. We'll call it a director's cut. One other thing that I did want to add that I didn't really touch on in that video is if you've got walls that have metal studs in them, and more and more new houses are having metal studs instead of wooden studs, they're the bane of my life. I hate metal studs. I can kind of vaguely understand why they use them for fire rating and all that sort of thing, but they're a nightmare because not only are they always going to get picked up by detectors and you'll think that it's a pipe when it's not, it's just a metal stud. At the point that you think that it's safe to drill into the metal stud, there's a reasonable chance that they run pipes and cables inside the studs. 
So you can't really win and you just have to hope for the best, basically. Oh, it's coming back. Oh, man, there's a road sweeper driving up my street at the minute, making an absolute racket just at the second that I'm filming. Anyway, if anyone does have any good tips for screwing in the metal studs without hitting surfaces that are hidden inside the metal studs, let us know in the description below. I swear, it's doing that on purpose. All day, it's been silent all day here. The second I press record, road sweeper. Anyway, very, very briefly, because I might make another video about this, we shall see. Gosforth Handyman Christmas Jumpers are now in stock on my little shop. They're not on Teespring, they're only available via my own shop. GosforthHandyman.com slash shop, you'll find them on there. I'll include a link in the description below. I've only got a really limited number of these and I wanted to tell you about them as soon as possible because it is kind of Christmas jumper season. And if you want one in time for your Christmas party, then you're gonna have to order it now. Anyway, with that in mind, I'll leave you in peace. Thanks for watching, I shall see you next time. Bye!